Welcome to the Human Origin Project, where we explore the science of you. To keep up to date, go to our iTunes channel and subscribe, and please leave a review if you enjoyed today's show. Today, it's my great pleasure and honor to introduce my interview with Carlotta Giangolano. Carlotta is the granddaughter of a Mayan shaman from the village of Coba. She is an absolute wealth of knowledge of the Mayan culture, science, astronomy, agriculture, which she has brought to life through her art and the depictions of the Popol view, which is the creation and legends and myth of the Mayan culture. In this three-part series, we'll discuss her upbringings in the village of Coba, her grandmother, who was the keeper of very sacred Mayan knowledge. And this is really where my connection with Carlotta started is I could see that she was so knowledgeable in how the workings of, for instance, the Mayan calendar was, its application into society. And it really brought forth my interest into an area that I've been researching for the past few years as to how deep the Mayan knowledge was and how can we really explain this? Well, in their Legends and Myths book, they talk about where they got this knowledge from and throughout this three-part series, we'll discuss this history. I really think this is an important interface between ancient traditions, legacy, and what we understand today. So I hope to bring Carlotta's beautiful art and knowledge to the world and I hope you really appreciate how deep the mind knowledge is and we're really going to follow this line up because I found this interview just fascinating and I'm sure you will as well. So this is part one of my interview with Carlotta Giangolano. Hi Tika, thanks so much for joining us. Um, what's really interesting is about when we met, uh, you told me about your heritage and that you have deep um relation connection in your family to the Mayan culture you're Mayan yourself and we started talking and your beautiful art and all of the the knowledge you, you bring about the calendar system and the 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 Mayan um myths and I, I bought your book about the Mayan creation story it made me really realize how much the Mayan people um you know how much knowledge they held and something I've been um researching recently and I realized just from talking to you for 10 minutes that there was a lot you knew. So thank you very much for, for sharing more with us. Um, today, I'd love to hear a little bit about your story and a little bit about how the Mayan creation story and the, the theory of the universe and how that's seen as how it affects our life. And um, My grandmother uh, was a shaman from the village of Coba. And... Um, the, her stories um, that she told me when I was a child, I still, you know, vivid in my mind, even so years pass by and, uh, you know, facing the society that we live, we need to work and have, uh, uh, you know, certain uh, place you know, for us to um, to leave. Um, actually, I was a nurse and work um, at the hospital and raised seven children. But one of the things they always remember when my when I I was with my grandmother is that how how you know we faced. Uh, difficulties every day even so uh, my grandmother uh, warned me about what do I need to do or guide me more or less you know to what I need to do for the future uh, what do I need to know about what happened in our own wars as the Mayan Empire uh, flourished at the time because she had a lot of uh, memories and words and, you know, things that she used to tell me when I was a child. One of the theories or one of the uh, narrations that she gave me was that how the universe, uh, how, how the universe at one time had a, a collision between one of the moons and one of the planets 
creating uh, all these uh, pieces that from this crash coming down to earth, causing uh, what we call it the big flood. And um, uh, is, that, is that the creation? Is that the first? That's, that's part of the first uh, book of creation. The first book of creation was the, um, the we call it the arrival also. Uh, this arrival um, was due to the f to to the fact that um, uh, if we open our eyes in the night, you know, we don't see anything because it's dark. But at one time, we believe that uh, um, certain energy that we called Ojo Negro was the the part of this creation the we are here now and um, uh, she used to say that uh, uh, if it wasn't because uh, the arrival of these creators you know uh, the existence of humans of the or existence uh, uh, we we came to to life, and at one time, you know, I asked her, uh, "Are we actually belong to? We came from another planet, or you know, what was the where we come from?" And she used to say, "Your existence was already created before, and the creators actually brought us to this place." Or Earth. Um, after the years uh, that we, as humans, settled here, um, that was part of the first book of creation, the arrival. This is why I sort of uh, I'm still working on my first book. the The book that you uh, that I just uh, Published is the book of how this was implemented to um, in, in stages, you know, how was implemented, uh, for example, uh, the elements the, with the arrival, the elements, and the collision of the first flood, you know, uh, causing. Um, a big disturbance in the planet. Um, is there any discussion of, because the Mayan calendar is obviously very, very accurate, is there any discussion of a date and the time period for that first? Um, no, because um, what what was um, in the codices, the information, they are being destroyed. But uh, as my grandmother used to say, that uh, uh, the codices the, the might be destroyed, but the existence of uh, a bigger record is still uh, in one of the caves in the Yucatan area, uh, or in this area, Mayan area. And um, she said, uh, um, I've been searching for these caves that she mentioned especially for the past five or ten years we've been going there uh, discovering things that she actually mentioned when she was alive and uh, um, the, the thing is that when she told me that um, due to the, uh, the second flood because she she record her memory that there was a big flood, number one, and then there was another flood. I, I guess pieces of the same crash is still going around and somehow they landed a, in the planet again. And, um, and did she talk about the reason for those floods for the, was there a astronomical um, connection to that? Uh, yes, yes. Um, we still have pieces up there, 
you know they're not all landed landed in certain places and uh, the way the universe is moving you know there's still pieces there lots okay. of pieces yeah we, lots we of fly pieces through it all everywhere the time. we call it uh, asteroids we call it whatever you want to call it but they're, they're still there and we don't know in how long or when it's going to land or not in, in, in our planet. There was a very big near impact in 1908 in Russia that it, it didn't, it, it, but it flattened a, a very big area of, of forest and killed all the, and but the, it was a tiny piece and it actually didn't impact the ground. It just exploded and, and sent a, a wave of energy. Talking about the episode in Siberia. Siberia, yes, correct. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I say, there's still some pieces. If you go, never go went to the Grand Canyon, you can see that actually it was, you know, a big hit in there, you know. Um, the thing is that when years ago, they in the Yucatan area, you know, at the head of the Yucatan area, um, there was the empire, the Mayan empire. And the Mayan empire and the second flood actually suffered a cataclysm. And due to the fact that most of the um, area uh, was flushed down to the ocean, uh, the people actually from that a particular clan of Mayan because there are other clans in the area with the different uh, names but the the Mayan the 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 ones we call the Mayan Mayan <laughs> actually went and refugee themselves and in other tribes okay and this is how the technology and the astronomy and the writing and the painting and all that was spread all the way down to Guatemala, Salvador, Honduras, and all these, these places because of the uh, refugee uh, people that suffered this uh, cataclysm. So was this a Mayan city that was flooded? And so they yes. had to... Li- no? No, the entire area was flooded. The whole area. There yes. are records that a big meteor landed just outside the Yucatan area mm-hmm. and flooded everything. And do we know a date for this or is it... This is relatively recently, I, isn't it? No, no. no. This is a really, no. It's the same this story is that you yes. see in the Bible, in any other culture, they're talking about this big impact. That this so this is the big one. Okay. Right. Okay. So, yes. the, so the Mayan people were there before this big impact. And the biggest one we have on record is one that caused at 12,800 years ago, mm-hmm. that caused the breakup of the North American ice sheet. And that is dated to, and that then talked about a cold snap called the Younger Dry Period that went for 1,100 years to 11,600 years. And and we know then that the temperatures came up then to what they currently are. Um, mm-hmm. So it sounds like it's, yes. it's related it to that. it was that time. Okay. Yeah, it was uh, more or less close to that time. Um, there are another, um, I would say, main elements that, that we need to take in consideration. Uh, for example, Puma Punka, you know, um, you can see that uh, the existence of this big, huge, beautiful city uh, that we still thinking about how, what kind of technology was used to build this beautiful place that now it's been destroyed. We, we can assume not necessarily, uh, you know, or take a theory that it could be one of the impacts coming from the uh, from the outside, you know, not necessarily that uh, uh, the people there disappear or died or whatever, you know, because some of the pieces can have uh, what they call um, radiation. Who knows if actually uh, all these people died or whatever, 
you know, because um, we're still finding cities uh, that that were built at one time that we cannot have an explanation. What a, what theory can put in there is that it can be possible that there was. Uh, uh, destroyed by these pieces coming from the outside. Did her stories, did the records talk about what astrological bodies were involved? Is there a talk of planets or a talk of... No, no. Um, you know, sometimes uh, mm, the Mayan people can tell what is up there or what's coming just by looking at the sky. That's because... Um, they're very much involved in astronomy and astrology. So um, there, we still have people that knows exactly what is going on in there, you know. Even so, they, we have a big microscope these days, you know, new technology and all that. Uh, it's, I think it's up to the, to the people that have the knowledge of how the planets were um, built or the universe was set up. You know, they have a map of the universe, not only in paper, but in here. And that's you know? what that's what really drew me to the mind culture, the, the mathematics and the, the systematic um, record keeping of the astro astronomical bodies and that's what i see in the mount the calendar system and there's a lot of misconceptions but the the mind calendar system has so much information in it doesn't it and um it might help to talk a little bit about that and how uh, how it's how it's formed and how brilliant it is because it relates to not only astronomical and many many different astronomical and connections between cycles but also to nature and to human behavior and our physiology um yeah, so I'd love you to take us through that a little bit. Um, you know, the how maybe from the 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 smallest parts to and taking us through the how the Mayan calendar works. Well, the, the Mayan calendar um, consists in um, different uh, stages or different circles. Um, at one time, we feel that we were the inventors of the watch. You know, because uh, we go to King. King is the circle of the, uh, what they call the days. And then we go to Tunes. Tunes is a circle of the months. So how many King and how many Tunes? 20, 20 uh, Kings and um, 19, uh, no, 13, 13, um, um, Tunes. Tunes, months. yes. And then Bactoons. Bactoons are the years. Yes. Okay, so one circle, when one circle moves, then uh, one house of the uh, tunes move. And then when one circle is filled, then another circle fill the Bactoons with the years. And then the Bactoons, they go on and on and on and on until the millenniums. So we know how to count millenniums and not months and days, but millenniums. Then we use, we don't use the 20, we use the zero, which it's the same equivalent of 20 houses. So we use zero, one, two, three. Zero is very important in the mathematical system. And, um, you know, even if these days, you know, accordingly to the Gregorian calendar, uh, we come up to the same amount of days, you know, and we know, we knew that millenniums before the invention of the Gregorian calendar. I mean, the problem with the, the Gr Gregorian calendar is that it's far more inaccurate and because it doesn't For, have multiple systems. Well, because of one day. Of the one, leap year. Uh, one day, I think it's one day and a half because in the, because they don't use the zero. zero. We use the zero, so it has to be exactly 365. So explain that in the 
um, in terms of the numbers because so, so we have 20 kin, which is the days. Mm -hmm. We have 13 tun, which is the month. So 20 times 13, that's the full year. Um, I give you, uh, I'm going to give you um, a copy of my uh, uh, the calculations of the Mayan. So I, right now I I sure, don't have it, you know. No, if you want, uh, the 19 houses that they are included in the month cycle, in the year cycle. No. They are not of 30 days or 31 days. They go from 20 to 22 per group. But in the end, they complete the 365 days. Mm. So it's a multiple of cycles. That's work. right. Okay. They are not exactly the same amount of days per cycle, but altogether the 19 houses comprise the full 365 days and some, mm -hmm. because the cycle actually include the offset of the six hours to make the the, the, the next 24 hours for uh, every four years. And that's very interesting because the, the calendar system, the mind calendar system is the most accurate I've seen, but every calendar system in the world, except that's for the, right. the new one, it, it correlates. Yeah, exactly. There's, There's variation. Every so often, but that's, you can find the same concept in many other cultures. You know, the Maya were the first one to organize it properly and they extended their calculation over and over and over. Mm. Yeah. The, the thing is also that accordingly to the astronomy, um, we are the third planet in our solar system. So in consideration of our place, to measure time and days here, we use that as base to calculate the, you know, the the movement of the uh, of the um, days, and the movement of months, and the movement of years. Okay, so, so w number three is very important in our theory uh, uh. about the calendar. Okay, and, and that accounts for Earth in the solar system and how the other planets affect. That is correct. We use the third place of the solar system to become, to count time. That makes it, complete sense. Because if, if it's Mercury, you know, you have to see how many days are there, but we haven't found any in Venus or Mercury or whatever, you know. But we are the third planet in the solar system, so that for we are uh, using the third, the number three, because of place to be able to uh, come up with uh, the calendar. That makes complete sense because because all it is it's a calculation of time around the sun. So you must know where which planet because all of those planets affect the movement of it and that's what so it, it it's calculating that astronomical order yes. within that's yes. absolutely brilliant so are the nine calendars do they represent the orbit of the different planets or no they represent the timing here our planet also have an expiration date <laughs> okay we we don't know how or when but Accordingly to the last circle, you know, the millenniums, okay? They can be in two or three millenniums. It can be tomorrow. It can be because nobody have used this calendar for calculations. You know, the mathematical system that there was, that the Mayas used, there's it's not being applied to any of the other calculations or whatever, you know, uh, NASA and all these uh, agencies, you know, they haven't, they don't have any idea of, of, how, of how, how, how to calculate or how to do this. But sometimes even for us with a naked eye, we can see when it's going to rain, where it's going to be windy when it's going to be cold when it's going to be you know sometimes we say 
uh, oh, my my arm hurts, you know, whatever. And we say, oh, there's the change in our time, the weather, there's a change of weather. Sometimes we don't pay attention to certain signs that we receive and we just, you know, as soon as you receive the information, your pain is gone because of the information that you receive. Oh, it's going to, for example, it's going to rain. It's, it's, it's related to the weather. I have a big headache. Sure, you have a big headache because, not because it's going to rain, but the pressure and the atmosphere is telling you something or you have an eating. You know, it's, your body is telling you something. And we miss those signs every day. That's what I've found. Immediately what I began to think with the, when I began to look at the calendar system and the Mayan calendar system in particular, was there was a reason why they used, and they were deep mathematicians, astronomers, um, but there's a reason why we need to be in sync with all that. And like you said, is because when we are in sync, and that's why the Mayan calendar is so valuable because it puts us back in sync with the order of, what's happening and it's just cat it's just observations and um what um did your grandmother used to teach you how the to use the mind calendar in your day-to-day -day life like the naming of children is did you use that um because doesn't it depend when they're born and the astrology for instance how it applies to um none not really um you know sometimes we think about uh, elements that they are in the atmosphere, uh, the energy that it's available to all of us, you know, sometimes uh, we use it, sometimes we don't. And the energy that exists tell us that uh, we can do things that we want, you know. Uh, this energy, actually, we direct it the way um, um, we we feel comfortable with it. Um, these days, we put names to the energy, for example, telekinesis, uh, ESP, astral travel. We put names to something that exists and is only one. Okay. Mm, it depends what kind of energy you you feel more comfortable or what type of energy you have developed more, you know. And so is this related to um, the mind astrology system? Yes. And, okay. uh, astronomy. Astronomy or astrology Astro or both? No. Astrology. 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 Yes, okay. yes, yes. And so does that work with them? How does that, how does the astro astrological system work? Um, The astronomy, it's, it's, it's a, a field that it covers a lot of things, you know, not only one subject. It's not, it's more related to the stars in the universe. Accordingly to the guidance of the universe, uh, whatever we see up there, you know, it's, uh, it's a sign where we are, where we're going. It, it's a it's something that uh, give us uh, the uh, the freedom to express ourselves uh, as our own existence. Are there thirteen mind astrological figure uh, time spans, or is it twelve? Nineteen. Nineteen. Oh, 19, 19. Nineteen houses. Okay. Yes. Nineteen houses. Um, we're talking about astrology. Or astronomy because they are quite different. Yeah, I was okay. talking about the astrology. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think you, you may say that the astrology part of it was the science that the priests in the Mayan civilization were using to interpret uh, the event of life and to create or suggest the best way to. Uh, seed, the best way to harvest, the best way to have a child, and to events of the daily existence. But there is another element, you know, in the Mayan civilization, 
52 is the basic of life and their cycle of existence renew every 52 years Definitely. to the point that when the cycle complete the, the official building that are created they don't get destroyed by they they be built upon if you go to chichen itza there is not one pyramid there are layers of pyramid they are being built one on top of the other one every 52 every years it, there's a the renewal the renew. that is uh, the, an element that is important to consider in calculating or in trying to discover all these mathematical cycles that the Mayan were using in their own existence. That makes complete sense. And is 52, does it, what does that number represent? I have no idea. Well, they, <laughs> they, the 52 represent, in a way, uh, the fifth, for example, or, for, or um, senses, the taste, the eyes, or senses, okay? Given that it's the number two, we are the number two because we have split ourselves between the good and the, and the bad, you know? So between the two is the number two. Between the five, we have the five senses, okay? So we say, accordingly to renew myself from these five, from these uh, senses, we need to do something. And doing something is re re rebuild, re not only rebuild yourself automatically, but rebuilding a pyramid on top of the other pyramid every 52 years, it reminds us what we need to do. That makes complete, and it seems like there's a metaphysical explanation there because it's talking about senses, but also potentially maybe it's talking about you know consciousness and the you know the the, the subdivision of the whether there's two splits of consciousness and then in the senses, and so it's talking about the seven principal you know features of life in a way, and and this kind of. Um, uh, philosophy, you know, lived on into the Greeks. They talk about the dual universes. Yeah, every every civilization has a different interpretation of the same elements. But what is constant is that there is a physical aspect of our existence, but there is also a, a spiritual aspect of our existence. And the two sometimes mix, sometimes they fight each other. But those are elements for which in, in which we live. There is no separation. Each culture as a different perception or interpretation of it, and the Maya have that. You know, and they are using it, they are being steady throughout their existence. You know. They evolve like everybody else. They got to the apex of their civilization and then went to the end of it. You, know. you, you, you need to also uh, get the eye um, in that point. Uh, for example, a light bulb, you know, electricity is composed of the two poles, okay, negative and positive. The two, if you merge in, it make one. And this is how we apply ourselves there, you know, we're light, we light. We, we search not for the piece that we're missing, but something that it will bring us the, the whole theater in front of us, who we are, how, why have we been researching all of this? You know, are we researching or looking for something for uh, put the puzzle together? No, this is something that ourselves are anxious to find. You know, this this piece of us that belong to us, and if we find it we can have a very uh, a better spectrum of what is around us you know some some people have found it and we call it saints because they we you know there is a manifest a manifestation of this energy that existed 
And when that happens, you know, we we are really there. You know, in the Mayan culture also, we believe in reincarnation. If I put enough, it's like it, uh, you put enough coins in a, a, in a pot, you know, we call it a bank. A, and then what? When the bank is full, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You, you, you're going to get another one probably and put some more. But when you finish filling out one, what are you going to do? Use it. Use it. If you have any energy, if you feel having any, any energy, don't waste it and put it somewhere else. Use it for yourself. Because it's very important to use it for yourself. Not to use it for bad or good or do this or do that. No, use it in yourself. And you become more aware of your existence. Once you become more aware of your existence, life gets easy. I'd like, say make, a piece of cake. I'd like to make a comment on that. You know, this level of energy that is available and we see expressed by, in any culture by certain people, not everybody, because we discount it. But in the Christian uh, ambient, we call this saint. In the uh, Buddhist uh, environment, they call it something else. You see, any form of energy. But what is interesting that really fascinated me in seeing it is that in this so-called pre-industrial society or primitive society, there is always somebody that becomes the expression of this energy. No. In the American Indian society, there is always a medicine man, as they call it, that was able to call uh, uh, the time for hunting, to call the herds to come by so they could hunt and they could live. But in the Mayan, there is always the priests that have not just knowledge, but they teach to use of that. Mm -hmm. They bring certain people from childhood into their fold and they teach them to be the healer of the family, of the community. So there is a system created so people can, you or somebody can use this energy. For example, her grandmother used to be a healer, used to be a shaman in the community. She was capable to express this energy many forms. She could pass through travel, she could bring medicine, she could heal people. And all that is passed on, that knowledge is passed on from generation to generation. Not to everybody, but to a certain people. The she educates her ones. in that type of use of energy. And everybody can do it, but you need to start with it, you know? So is this based on so the, the date of when you're you're born? You are at the date and time when you're born. They read the the um, solar system and then the wider star system. So it's a whole mathematical. Probably there is a connection. I'm not sure. I'm not an expert in astrology or anything like that. But the astro the astrological people claim that that can create a chart and from that chart identify the traits of your personality. Now, this is different, no? Yes. And if you analyze ancient civilization, there is always a trend where this particular knowledge get passed on from, a per from usually in the female line, from one person to the next person, to the next person. And if this person in the ring is able to express it, the energy grows and is passed on again. Otherwise, it dies out. No, and that's common in all things. And our cultures. Yeah, and it, it's fascinating me to hear the story that she was telling me about what her grandmother was able to do. No, and it, I'll give you an example. No, you can say no. She was married to an engineer, uh, cause an, an, 
a metal engineer. Her husband was, was, was doing, uh, was running a mine and, and so on. No. And the guy from, was from France originally. And he loved his own cognac and things like that. And his birthday was coming and she transported herself to France, bought the bottle of cognac and brought it back found that this lady is in Mexico. There was no transportation to go to things. The capacity to bilocate and to move astral yourself and physically transport elements is not something that many people can do. She was able to do it. Thank you for listening to today's show. For more information, you can read the full transcript articles and discussion on our website humanoriginproject.com you can visit us on social media at human origin project on facebook and the human origin project on instagram follow us on twitter or join the forum boards and email list to keep up to date with all the new information and if you enjoyed today's show please subscribe on itunes and leave a review because it helps others to find this information and helps us to bring you the topics you want to discuss and hear about. Until next week, I hope your life is filled with happiness, healthiness, and harmony.